Good morning, YouTube. I am new to this. This is something that uh, I just decided to one day do. I teach like a Bible study uh, where I live, and uh, I thought that maybe getting on to do just a small sample of the Bible studies that I teach would be something fun, and YouTube is the way to do it. So anyway, bear with me because I am new to this, and I'm going to be looking all over the place. I've got my notes up there taped up on the computer, and then I've got some down here. So, And then in my Bible, I've got my Bible verses tagged. So I'm just going to be bouncing all over the place, and maybe after like 50 of these YouTube videos, I might actually have it together and not feel so like I don't know, you know, what I'm going to say and where to look and where to, to whatever. So anyway, grab your coffee. I got mine and grab some breakfast, you know, whatever. It may be in the evening for you as you're watching this. I don't know, but I'm going to do these in the morning. So anyway, today's uh, devotion is something I've taught before on, and it's on overcoming offense. And most of the things that I uh, teach or do studies on are things that I have had to, you know, work on or overcome or, you know, have had struggles with myself. I'm sure most people have struggled with overcoming offense. It's just something that we live with every day. We live with people that are hurt and angry and, you know, they like to hurt others and lash out. And, you know, we, you know, if we have a sensitive heart, we tend to take offense. And at least I do. Not all the time. I'm getting a lot better, a whole lot better. So anyway, let's go ahead and start. Um, I start with the definition of offense. And I'm going to be looking up there, so you're going to see my eyes dart up there. But I've only got three cards. So once those three cards are done, then I'm going to start looking at my notes. I don't know if I'll do the cards up on top anymore. But anyway, the definition of offense is a violation, breaching of the law, it is also can be um, a lack of politeness, you know, just mean people, just people that want to be rude and inconsiderate and fail to show regard for others' feelings. Um, offense is when you uh, wound others, when you hurt their feelings. Um, you know, our assumptions are usually wrong. Like we can spend all day long going, Oh, he didn't talk to me. It must be because, or she didn't text me back. I mean, that's a huge one. Like you send an email to somebody or a text to somebody and they don't get back to you. And you're like, oh, they must be mad at me. They must, you know, what did I do? And then you, you stew on thinking about what you'd done. Maybe, you know, if you'd said something, you review the text, the email, whatever. And, you know, you really start just overanalyzing uh, the, the whole issue when really, they probably were just busy. You know, sometimes I can't get right back and respond to emails and texts, although I really try hard to do that because I know how it feels. I like, you know, to people to respond to mine as well, but there are times that I am busy and I can't. So I need to understand that with, you know, when it comes to other people and I need to not stew on it and make something bigger than it really is because I don't know the facts. And that's a big thing is um, when we become offended, we really don't know the facts. So we create these emotions in us that make us sick. Like, you know, you may go to bed at night and still be thinking about why that person walked past you and didn't say hi or didn't respond to you or you didn't even get, get invited somewhere, you know, that everybody else got invited to. This causes a lot of emotional pain, uh, mental anguish, physical pain. The list goes on and on. Like, it doesn't just affect one part of you. It's, it's a whole part of you. You know, it's, it's your emotions. It's everything. So give people the benefit of the doubt, you know, just, okay, maybe they were busy. Maybe, you know, you don't know the facts. So until you know the facts, you give the benefit of the doubt and just, okay, they were busy. They, not everybody's mad at me. You know, not everybody is mad at you save the stress and believe the best. You know, uh, there's a verse in the Bible and I have it written down a bit. 
1 Corinthians 13, 7 talks about love hopes all things, uh, love believes all things, it trusts all things, it perseveres, you know. So God commands us to love, to love others. So to love means that we need to trust their intentions, that they meant well, that they mean well for us. Um, it means to bear with it when those people are hurting us intentionally. We need to bear with it to a certain extent. We'll talk about that a little more of that um, a little bit later. But, um, you know, so as love is a choice, we make the choice to to bear with it. We make a choice to trust that it's that they have our best intentions. We make the choice to um, to believe them that it, it you know, that and we just don't want to stress ourselves out and think the worst. So um, we just as love is a choice. What I was, I was saying is just as love is a choice, so is becoming offended. So we make the choice. We can choose to be miserable and be offended by everything everybody says or does to us, whether they meant to or not. We are punishing ourselves. They don't have a clue. Okay, so why do it? Give them the benefit of the, of the doubt. Don't let them offend you. Brush it off. Water off a duck's back. So our first verse, um, which many of you may know, is Philippians 4.8. Um, and let's see, it 17.25 in my Bible. That's what we have it on. Um, and I did have it all. It would be kind of cool and put these little tabbies in there and it helped me get there faster, but Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, you know, let's see, and I have a note in my Bible that says here, sin and holiness always begin in the mind. Find what is true and think about that. Find the lovely and think about it, and peace will be there if you do. So if you can actually, if someone did intend to hurt you and offend you, don't dwell on that part of it. If you can think of something positive about that person or, you know, think that they're sick today, they're, you know, having a bad day. Think on that kind, on the positive aspect of it and peace will come because we are commanded to think on whatever is, is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything. Is excellent or praiseworthy. That tells me that there is something. I mean, that you can probably try to find something in in the offense about that person or whatever that will be positive that you can think on. Even if it's just a little nugget of something, you just you take that and you dwell on that, and peace will come. So that uh, that was Philippians four eight, and I'm sure many of you already have heard that verse and know that verse. Uh, you know, by heart, I'm sure, you know, it's something, it's a verse we learn as, as young Christians. And I mean, even, you know, older Christians, it's just, it's a good verse to reflect on. Um, and when I say older Christians, I mean, those that have been, you know, born again for years and years and years. And uh, it's just a great verse to, to meditate on and to live by. So Becoming offended is taking the enemy's bait. That's all there is to it. He is throwing out that fishing pole with bait on it. And we are taking it. We're biting it when we are offended. You've got to stop, 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 stop. Because when you take his bait, you are shutting the door to God and to Jesus and to his grace and mercy and blessings and what he has planned for your life. When you open the door to the enemy, you are closing the door to to Christ and what he can offer you. You give the enemy power. That's just plain and simple. All there is to it. You have no boundaries when you are taking that bait of offense. So uh, resist the bait and allow God's blessings to flow. First Peter 5 8 is our next uh, verse. It says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a Howls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, looking for someone to offend is what I have. I devour, I have, but in parentheses, I put offend. He's looking for someone to offend. 
So resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. You are not alone. Everybody suffers. Christians, non-Christians, it doesn't matter. Everybody does. And it's a lot of it is the enemy and what he's out to do. He's prowling around like a roaring hungry lion and he wants to destroy us. So just uh, just know that and uh, resist him and he will flee from you. Because if you allow him in and you don't resist him, you're closing the door on, on the blessings and the grace of, of God. So offenses start as seeds. We need to uproot them. You know, an offense starts in the mind. He didn't talk to me. He didn't blah, 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 whatever. Starts in the mind, goes to the heart, takes seed in the heart, and then flourishes, grows. If we don't uproot it, you go out and weed the seeds of your heart, the bad seeds of your heart, not the good ones. You take out the bad. Hebrews twelve fifteen is our next verse that talks about this. We have so many verses here to share. Um, <laughs> See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. So true. Not only does the bitter root defile you, but it defiles others. And, you know, your family, your kids, your husband. If you're a bitter person, you will spread that. You will spread that root. So take that, that offense and pull it. Rip it out. Do not let it take root in your heart. Do not stew on it. Remember that hurt people hurt people. People offend others because they hurt and they want others to feel the same pain. They're tormented inside, emotionally and mentally, and they don't like it. They feel afraid. They feel trapped. That's the enemy. They have taken the enemy's bait. They have allowed him to have control of their own thoughts and minds and hearts and have allowed fear to set root in their heart. And so they feel alone and afraid and they want others to feel that way. So they will hurt others. That's just the, the way it is. How about you? Are you one of those people? Are you one that offends? Do you do you hurt so bad that you want to hurt others? Um, Matthew 12, 33, I believe it is. 33 or 38. Right the fruits in our heart and um, that a tree is recognized by its fruit. Do you have moldy, rotten, bitter, nasty fruit? Or do you have sweet, juicy, colorful fruit in your heart? Because that is how you will be recognized. Christian or non-Christian, that's, that's it, you know, even non-Christians, you can tell the fruit. You can tell what's in their heart by how they respond, how they act to others. Our words speak life or death. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21 says the tongue has the power of life and death. That is something I have learned and, and think about all the time before I try before I say something to somebody is I think, will what I'm about to say bring me closer to God and to this person or further from God and this person? So that's just kind of a good rule of thumb for me that I like to use is that whole, our tongue speak life and death. Um, so what I'm going to say, will it bring life or death to that, that individual? Uh, Ephesians 4.29 talks about, do not let any, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So be very careful. Be, um, be wise with your words. Be discerning. Know when to speak, when not to speak. And, uh, you know, it's definitely that will save you a whole lot of trouble if you just if you watch that. Um, remember, Jesus was afflicted and tortured and ridiculed, but he did not open his mouth. Um, Isaiah 53, 7. I thought this was really cool because we need to model our life after Christ. And uh, this was something Isaiah 53, 7 that I read. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. So even though Jesus himself was ridiculed and offended, I mean, just people were trying to offend him and hurt him. He did not open his mouth. So maybe that's what you need to do is be like 
Christ. Be like Jesus and don't open your mouth. If you can't say anything nice, don't say it at all. Um, let's see. Sometimes even opening our mouths. I know in my case, sometimes with my husband, I will open my mouth when I probably shouldn't. And it starts arguments. And, you know, it's like, why? Why do I do this to myself? Just keep my mouth shut. So like, like Jesus, keep silent. Don't don't say anything. Um, let's see. Um, people are mean. Uh, we can't control their behavior, uh, but we can only re control how we react to it. So try to give the benefit of the doubt. Um, value their statement and assume they mean well. Uh, if you have to, ask them about it. Go to them and ask them, what did you mean by this? You know, this really kind of came across as this is how I took it. Did you mean it this way? You know, why do why don't we just go to the people and ask them? You can say it tactfully. So give the benefit of the doubt. If you really can't, go ask them. Get the truth. Get the facts. And then you know what to do from there. So um, sometimes we do need to confront uh, Matthew 15, 18, 15. Um, Matthew eighteen fifteen. We will not go to Matthew fifteen. That was the tree about the fruits. But Matthew eighteen fifteen. These verses <laughs> they've got me kind of confused here. But anyway, um, talks about sometimes we do need to confront. Um, but then again, we need to be careful because if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So initially, we are to go to them, just the two of, two of us, two of you. Um, but you don't want to do that on everything. On it. There are some things that it's just not worth the battle. Choose your battles. If it is something that is destroying relationships, destroying hearts, leading others away from Christ, then definitely go to them and talk to them about how they are offending you or others. You know, if it is causing that kind of a pain and causing others to turn from Christ. Otherwise, if it's a minimal offense, let it go. Let it be water off a duck's back. Don't stew on it. Um, just remember what comes out of the mouth comes from the garden of the heart. So they're spewing nasty garbage. It's what's in their heart. Pray for them. That's what it means when Jesus says, pray for your enemies. It doesn't mean pray. I mean, you can pray blessing. Oh, I mean, you want to pray, pray, bleh, pray blessing on them, but it really, the blessing you're praying for them is that God will open their hearts and they will see him. And, and he will gently convict them as he does gently and lovingly so that they can see the error of their ways and go make make it right. So that's how we play, pray blessing over our enemies is to pray that God gets hold of their heart and, and they are able to see Christ and see, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal. So pray for, pray for them. Don't stew on it. Uh, admit that offense is hurt. But don't get upset. Move on. Uh, get the focus off yourself. If you think about it, they didn't th do this to me. They blah. They're not responding. They're this. They're that. He didn't look at me. He didn't talk to me. I wasn't invited. Look at how many me's and I's we're talking about here. That's it's uh, all about us. We're making it all about us. The focus is on us and what others have done to us. Get off. Get over yourself. It's it's just preoccupation with us. And, and Jesus says for us to not do that. You know, that is a sin when we are thinking selfishly and being completely and utterly about ourselves. Um, it's a lot more difficult to become offended when you get yourself off your mind. So just remember that when you get yourself off your mind, you won't become as offended as easily. So think about that. Examine your own feelings. We often become easily offended because of an interpersonal struggle. Is there something in your life that is making you more irritable? That 
when, you know, that really you are struggling with. And when people say something about it, you immediately take offense and then you blame them. You know, it's, that might be something you need to work on. There's something inside of you that needs to be dealt with. That way you won't be taking offense when people are speaking the truth to you, you know? So, uh, ask God to help you get over those insecurities and, um, and the past wounds that you, that you're holding on to and just the struggles you're dealing with. Um, look at the other person's background. Not everyone shares your perspective. Not everyone sees things the way you do. Not everyone has the same personality. Some personalities are more abrasive by nature. Um, some points of view are either black or white. Allow and appreciate these differences. Sometimes it's just the people's personality. Okay. Face it. <laughs> you might have a personality quirk that somebody else doesn't like. You know, it's the way it is. That's life. Prepare for the offense. If you know of someone who tends to offend you at every turn, prepare for it. Before you see them, be like, okay, this is probably what they're going to do. So, you know, I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm just going to laugh it off. You know, it's uh, what else can you do? So sometimes preparing for the worst is the best thing. <laughs> at least for me, it works sometimes. Um, remember that we all make mistakes. Uh, I'm sure I've offended others. I, in fact, I know I, I have. Um, so you probably have as well. And it's just life. Until we get to heaven, this is what's going to happen. You know? So let's make the best of it. Romans 7, 18 talks about how because of our sinful nature, it makes doing right all of the time difficult. We want to do right, but it's hard. It is, is really hard until we get to heaven. It, we will struggle with this, especially when we've got the enemy out prowling like a lion trying to get us. So work on that. Just just work on not taking his bait. Um, do, what, do what Jesus would do. He kept his mouth quiet. When you don't know what to say, when you're going to say something mean, don't say it at all. Be silent. Speak life. Speak, speak life, not death. Is what I'm going to say going to bring me closer to God and this person or further? Simple as that. When we become offended, it changes how we normally would respond to situations, and it makes us susceptible to sinning. Choose to not be offended. Forgive others daily. Blow it off. Don't take the bait, and don't let your weedy garden grow in your heart. Uproot those nasty, bitter weeds, because they are only making you sick. Nobody else, nobody else is sick by what you have in your heart. So get rid of it. Be a person of love. You just... You love others, love yourself, love Christ above all. And, uh, you know, just every day dive into his word because that's what is going to be planted into your heart. You know, exchange those seeds of bitterness for God's word, for his living word. This really, this makes a difference in a person's life when you get down every day and you study his word, you study his character you start supernaturally becoming more like him and um, you, you don't get as hurt as often by others. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed today's study and believe me, I will get better. I will get more comfortable with this and have my Bible verses actually, you know, lined out right correctly. So anyway, you all have a good day and love God, love others and love yourself. Thank you.